After completion of this section, you will have an increased awareness of the safe operation of an auxiliary steam plant. We assume that the boiler has been out of operation for a while and that no major maintenance work has been done. Check that the following valves are closed. Main stop valve, foam blowing valve, bottom blowing valve, vent valve on economizer, drain valve on economizer. Check that the following valves are open. All pressure gauge valves. All level gauge valves. Vent valve on steam drum. Vent valve on superheater. Drain valve on superheater. Feed water valves. Check that the tubing and connections to the pressure gauges are open by blowing through. The tube must be full of condensate all the time. Check the water level and refill if necessary. Use both auxiliary and main feed water line for testing. Start the air preheater. Check the combustion chamber for any oil spill. If everything is okay, start the combustion air blower. Purge for two to four minutes at full capacity. Recircle the fuel oil until you have the correct viscosity of the burners. Select the smallest burner tips. Reduce the capacity on the blower. Insert the torch and check the flame and the position of the torch. Open for fuel to the burner and check for proper flame. If OK, remove the torch and check the flame again. If not OK, close the fuel oil valve immediately and increase the blower capacity to maximum again. Purge for two to four minutes before you retry to ignite the burner. Depending on the size and design of the boiler, you should use one to two hours to reach full steam pressure. This is to avoid damage to the boiler furnace and tubes. After a while, you can open the main steam valve slightly to avoid sticking. Close the drain valve on the superheater. Keep the vent valve on the superheater open until steam flow to consumers has been established. This steam flow is necessary to cool the superheater. Blow through the level gauges. As the pressure is increasing, the water level will rise. But be sure you are able to read the level all the time. If the water level is too high, you can blow some of it off through the foam blowing valve. Do not use the bottom blowing valve as long as you are firing. The water level may also be too low caused by draining and venting. If you observe water hammering in the economizer, it should be cooled down by supply of feed water. It is good practice to water between the burners during firing because this will make the heating of the boiler more even. When you have reached the operational pressure, you should start to heat the piping system by opening the drain valves. Check that the water level is not too high before you open the main steam valve. 
This because the lower pressure on the steam line may cause water to enter the superheater. Change the burner tips to normal size. Check again oil air ratio before you switch to automatic control. Check that the seawater valve with the condenser is closed and easy to open. Open the seawater suction valve and start the seawater pump. Slowly open the seawater valve to the condenser and check the water flow. Start the condenser vacuum pump, steam ejector, and check that it is working properly. When the pressure is coming down, check that the alarm condenser high pressure is reset. Start the condensate pump and check the condensate flow. Check that the casing drain valve is open and check for water. Check that the steam supply valve is closed. Open the steam exhaust valve completely. Check lubricating oil level in the sump and possible water in the oil. Start the electrical lubricating oil pump and check the pressure. Check differential pressure on the oil filter. Open and check the gland steam system. Adjust the gland steam pressure. When there is a minor gland steam leak to the atmosphere, open to the gland steam condenser. Close any heating of the lubricating oil system. Reset the emergency stop system. Open the stop valve slightly. Check the turbine casing drain for water again. Continue to open the throttle valve slowly until the turbine starts to rotate. Check for any unfamiliar sound and vibrations. Keep the turbine rotating for a few minutes. Increase the RPM until you reach idling speed or no load speed. And continue to run at this RPM for another five minutes. Check lubricating oil pressure and stop the electrical lubricating oil pump. Check oil temperature and open for lubricating oil cooling when above 40 degrees centigrade. When the speed control valve is in action, open the emergency stop valve completely. Check again that all indicator and gauge readings are normal according to the operating manual and transfer RPM control to remote control position. If possible, you should start soot blowing before closing the oil-fired boiler. Open vent valve and drain valve slightly on the superheater. Close the oil to the burners and remove them from the furnace. Keep the blower running for some time to remove all gases from the furnace. Stop the blower and close the air intake to avoid cold air entering the furnace. When the steam pressure is below normal, close the main steam valve. When the steam pressure is 1 to 2 bar, you can open the vent valve and the drain of the superheater completely. When the boiler has cooled down, the feed water valves must be closed. Shut down the air preheater.